Hi, in this example, we're going to look at an unknown interest rates example with respect to one of these geometric annuities. These are usually a little bit harder, and as you'll see, it takes it's you got to you got to approach it from a little bit different uh, direction. Okay, so let's look at our example. We got a ten-year annuity immediate with annual payments has an initial payment of eleven. Each subsequent payment is ten percent more than its preceding payment. And I'm told the accumulated value of the annuity is 220.8 using an annual effective interest rate I. So I want to know what, what is this unknown interest rate I? What value is that? So my timeline, when I draw my timeline, of course, it's going to look like this. I've got a 10-year annuity immediate. I'm looking at the accumulated value of the annuity is 220.8. I know that it's an annuity immediate. And so the accumulated value of an annuity immediate is at the time of the last payment. So that's why the valuation date is at the time of the last payment there. Okay. First payment was 11. Next payment is 10% more. So that would be 11 times 1.1 and so forth. Timelines in years. I need a little bit more room. So I'm just going to move this timeline up to the, to the top of the screen. I is the annual effective interest rate that I'm seeking based on the information that I have. Again, I know so geometric annuity, when I, I know how to value geometric annuities using this three-step process. Step one is to VEP at the valuation date. So let's look at the last payment. Let's start with the last payment. It's already at the valuation date. So I don't need to accumulate that 11 times 1.1 to the ninth. That's the value of the last payment. I don't need to accumulate it. I don't need to discount it. Its value is 11 times 1.1 to the ninth power at that valuation date. So I get this expression, this VEP expression, 11 times 1.1 to the 9th. The payment immediately before that would be 11 times 1.1 to the 8th. I would need to accumulate that one year to get to the valuation date, so I do that by multiplying by an I. I recognize those are the four, first two terms. That's all I need, and then I need uh, the, the number of terms. So there's 10 payments. There's going to be 10 terms. Step two is to factor out the first term. So I'm going to factor out the 11 times 1.1 to the 9th from the expression on the right. I'll also go ahead and plug in the 220.8 for the accumulated value on the left. And what do I get when I factor out the first term in the big parentheses in, that la in the, the, the last expression there? I get a 1 plus what do I need to multiply 11 times 1.1 to the ninth by in order to recover the second term in the original expression, which is 11 times 1.1 to the eighth times 1, point, 1 plus i. So I see that I'm going to need to multiply times a 1 plus i divided by 1.1. So the part in red is what I need to multiply by in order to um, uh, uh, multiply the first fact, uh, what I factored out by in order to recover the second term. So, uh, so I've got that. And now at this point, what we would normally do if this was you know, if the interest rate was known, I would just look at that expression in red. And if that number was bigger than 1, if, then I would know, oh, I'm, use, I'm going to use an S angle 10 at rate J. And I even know what J is because since that number is bigger than 1, I'm thinking of it as being 1 plus J. So to get J, I would take that number in red and just subtract 1 from it. So I, I know how to get it. If, if I had the interest rate I, then I know exactly what symbol to use and what interest rate to use. Um, again, uh, I, I'm looking at the symbol at the expression in red, the 1 plus i divided by 1 plus 1, and I'm comparing it. Is it bigger than 1 or less than 1 usually is what I'm doing. So if it was less than 1, then I know I'm going to be using an a double dot, the expression in the parentheses that includes that red term. I, I would be thinking of as an a double dot, the VEP expression for an a double dot. And then that 1 plus i divided by 1.1 would be, I'm thinking of as the annual discount factor of V with respect to J. So the reciprocal of that would be a 1 plus J. So J would be the reciprocal of what is in red minus 1. So that's what I would normally do. However, this, I, don't, I don't know that value. That's what makes this a little bit harder problem. I don't have that interest rate. So I can't just by observation tell whether it's bigger or less than 1. So now there's a, so we have to think about it a little bit different, and this is how we'll do that. Notice that an a double dot angle 10 at rate j will always be less than or equal to 10, whereas an s angle 10 at rate j will always, always be greater than or equal to 10. So I'm going to look at that expression that I highlighted in red now, and the question is, is that expression, the whole expression, less than or equal to 10 or greater than or equal to 10? And in order to determine that, I'll look at what the 
The first term was what's in blue, what I have highlighted in blue now, that first factor. Well, if you do some arithmetic on your calculator, you'll see that that number is about a 25.9. So look at what we're doing. We're taking a, a number that's around 25.9 and we're multiplying by something to get a result of 220.8. Well, that tells me right. That tells me then that what's in red, you know, I'm being I'm multiplying that by the 25.9, and my result is a 20 is a 220.8. So what's in red has to be less than 10, and because it's less than 10, now I know I I could recognize that remaining factor as an a double dot angle 10 at rate j at some rate j. I can use the TVM buttons on the calculator at this point. Just, you know, the compute the I slash Y on the, on the uh, TVM buttons on the calculator, and I'll get a J value of 0.03773 dot, dot, dot. Again, I'm looking back at the expression, the 1 plus I divided by 1.1 that I, I have highlighted in red again, and I'm thinking of that as the, as the periodic discount factor with respect to the J interest rate. So that's, in other words, it's one over one plus J. And so when I take the reciprocal of that, I get a one plus J. So the reciprocal of what's in red minus one is equal to J, which I just found to be the 0 0.03773 number. So now at this point, you have an equation that you can just solve for I. I'd add one to the 0 0.03 number, uh, get 1.03773. Let's see, what I would do is take the reciprocal of that, multiply by 1.1, subtract one. Anyway, solve that, and you'll see that I is a 6% interest rate, that you end up with a 6% interest rate. Okay, so that's how you would solve this unknown interest rate problem. Notice that uh, in the VEP expression, I started with the last payment, and then, uh, and then looked at the, the, the next to last payment and so forth. That was the, how I, I calculated the VEP expression. Let's look at what happens in this situation if I would have started with the first payment when in my VEP expression. Well, the first payment of 11, recognize a pattern, and you'll see that you need to accumulate the 11 nine periods to get to the valuation date. So the VEP value, or if I value the 11 at the valuation date, I would do so by accumulating it nine periods by multiplying by a one plus I to the ninth. So I get 11 times one plus I to the ninth as my first term. My second payment is 11 times a 1.1 that I need to accumulate eight periods, and I do that by multiplying by a one plus I to the eighth, and I would continue this pattern for, for 10 terms. So far, so good. So far, so good. The next step in my three-step process is to factor out the first term, and when I do that, I get 11 times a 1 plus i to the ninth times a 1 plus, you'll see what, you should see that the, 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 uh, the ratio, the, the common ratio in the big parentheses in that last term has got to be a 1.1 divided by 1 plus i in order for me to recover the, the original expression. Okay, so now, again, I do the same thing. I'm looking at what the expression is in red here in the big parentheses, and the question is, well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to know, is the 1.1 over 1 plus i bigger than 1 or less than 1? And, of course, I don't know that because I don't know the i value. So then I have to think of it differently. I have to think of, well, is that whole expression less than or equal to 10 or bigger than or equal to 10? Because if it's less than or equal to 10, I'll use an a double dot, and if it's bigger than or equal to 10, I'll use, a, uh, I'll use an, an s. So, uh, so that's the question. And remember, what we did then was we looked at, well, what is the number out in front? Well, the number out in front now is no longer a number. It's an expression. It's an 11 times 1 plus i to the ninth. So I've got an unknown expression out front and an unknown value of, of what that ratio is, the common, the common ratio in that geometric sum in the, in the parentheses. So you're just not going to be able to get anywhere at this point uh, if you if you try to uh, use this approach, you're not going to be able to get anywhere by 
starting with the first payment and doing your VEP expression with your first payment. So when you have, the, the point here is that when you have these, uh, an unknown interest rate, I did this problem where the unknown interest rate was the annual effective interest rate. But maybe they give you the annual effective interest rate, but they don't give you the percent increase or decrease of the payments. That's also an unknown interest rate. And when you have unknown interest rates, it's usually, you, you, you've got to, do the VEP, the step one, in one particular order. You're not free to choose whichever order or you run into a situa situation like this that's on the screen if you choose the wrong order in which you're valuing each payment. So going back to the original solution, this is a solvable problem and it's solvable because when I do the VEP expression, when I do step one in the right order, in this case starting with the last payment, and working, working my way back, then I, I am able to actually solve the problem. Okay, so I've got one more example with unknown interest rates that I'll do in another video, uh, and it's a little bit trickier than this. So I'll see you in the next video.